I always get this thing like really messed up. I don't know how. But anyway, it's like really crooked always. But anyway, <laughs> the last two cards here are the spiritual plane. It helps us to understand why everybody's presenting themselves the way they present themselves as well as think the way they think. Now this card here helps us to understand what brought you two together. And this is the card that helps us understand what challenges that you guys face. Confidence is a challenge for you guys? What? Confidence? Why are you... Confidence? What the hell's going on here? But I love that the Ace of Cups and the Lovers are the cards that... Well, the Ace of, uh, the Ace of Cups is the underlying energy for y'all. As well as the Lovers being the energy that brought you two together. But at the same time, though. At the same time, though, family. What the hell's going on? Why must it be like this? Okay, well, it's nothing too bad. I don't think there's anything too bad here. It's just uh, new love, new things opening up. But we're not confident in what we were, you know, what we want because again, some things that may have happened in the past, some things that may have come up. You got some good stuff happening in this reading. It's just not having the. It's just not believing in yourself. Okay. Why is Ace of Cups coming up? Because of the Three of Wands. You guys have been working for it. You guys have been waiting for it. You guys have been expecting it. This is something that you guys have been manifesting. You've manifested new love to come into your life. Whether this is loving yourself, opening up emotionally in your relationships. Because I think somebody's definitely detached, which is why they don't have a lot of confidence in love or romance or anything in that, of that matter. Somebody's definitely shut their, hum their, their humanity down or shut their emotions off, which, which would, of course, make anybody feel unprepared. But the king, but the, excuse me, the magician knows that he's got everything that he needs, knows that he's got all the supplies that he could ever, ever have um, to be able to get him through any and every situation. So... To not believe that you have all the tools. This is like a situation where it's going to show you that you have all the tools. And help you to believe in yourself. Which is the, why the Ace of Cups is coming up here. This Ace of Cups is not the signifier of a new relationship with another person. This is, a, this is a refreshed and revised relationship between you and yourself. This person, the other person just happens to be the person that helps you figure that out. Same, You're the same for the other person. And that's what's going to bring you two together. The more you love yourselves, the more you guys can come together or split more apart because then you understand what you guys need for yourselves, right? This is the very thing. And I think this is why Release Your X is coming up because this is about letting, chopping off the parts that don't serve you and getting you closer to the things that do, right? So let's start off with this person here. Please feel free to make sure that the size that you guys pick is the one that resonates with you and not forest or doesn't whatever right so if it doesn't it doesn't it's okay it's not a big deal um but yeah starting off with this person here with the king of swords this person is showing up to be very very serious about the relationship maybe slightly detached slightly meaning a hell of a lot because the king of swords does not refer to his emotions not necessarily okay the king of swords is always uh, is always aware of all areas of his life he knows what he needs he knows what he wants he knows what he feels he knows all those things but will his emotions dictate what his decision will be no he comes from a very logical and a moral standpoint. So, this being said, this person is very logical in how they approach this relationship. But how they approach it is not necessarily from a standpoint that is necessarily going to help them move forward. Of course, this is good to have morals, boundaries, and all those good things. But if you're not emotionally open, you're not going to be able to do the things that the Ace of Cups is going to try to push you to do if that makes sense um for instance like you can't go into a math class or you can't go into an art class expecting to do art okay like like but this is the very opposite you can't go into an art class expecting to do math art is artistic math is logical this is like somebody going into an art class expecting to do some sort of mathematic equation you can't do it which is why this person has got to alleviate, or not alleviate, or leave this King of Swords stuff down. Because this is someone that's very, ma like, masters communication, masters the, the train of thought. They've gotten themselves under a very strong, disciplined kind of, you know, situation here. Like, mental, you know, uh, 
mental discipline, right? This person is very mes mentally disciplined. This person is very good at conveying messages, communicating. They're mastered, they've mastered this aspect of themselves. However, the part that they're not mastering is the anxiety. They're mastering the, the emotions, the things that they feel. Because this is what they are left with here. Nanosaurids. If they shut their emotions off, if they go back to logical state, they won't necessarily, you know, have to deal with this too much because they can just always think. But this is the problem, and not addressing how they feel is constantly going to be, you know, is going to be an issue. So they have to kind of allow this Ace of Cups to be, uh, for, you know, the forefront in their life and not constantly look at situations from a logical perspective. They have to be emotional. It's important to know what you're feeling. It's important to know why you're feeling it. But that's as far as that logic shit goes. This person is literally cock-blocking themselves at this point. Because they're always like, they're serious, they're ready to cut somebody up, they're ready to be defensive as well. And that defensiveness is to protect themselves from allowing them, to, you know, that emotional part of them to get hurt. But they're hurting themselves by that by not letting any sort of new beginning come in. By at least not being more emotionally available and open and vulnerable with themselves. That's even worse. But I get the sense that this person already knows that this is an issue because how they're presenting themselves is the six, excuse me, the ace of swords. A brand new way of thinking, brand new way of communicating, brand new way of seeing new things, taking in ideas, or utilizing ideas. Right? This person has got a, a sword here as their present. They're taking in information. This is like open house for information here, which is great. And I think this is good. A new way of communicating, a new way of, you know, thinking. Um, and so that means to me that they know there's a new beginning coming in. They know that there's something new that they have to learn, or they're going to learn. Um, there's an, also maybe a new opinion, a new belief system, or a moral sort of code that they want to exercise. This is good, but this is going to require them to be, you know, this is definitely all emotional here since the Ace of Cups is the four factor, right? This is the, the bottom line, the Ace of Cups. So, what he must know, or what that she must know, what, whoever this person is, is that there is something new here that will require them to be open to love, which is obviously why this person doesn't feel that very confident. Because they have always already had an issue with making a decision, making the decision to accept how they even felt about the person in the first place, the lovers. I know some of you guys are probably going to be in the comments like, oh my god, you're reading this reading so negatively, and it's not. It's really not negative. This person is honestly aware that they have to be more emotionally open. They're honestly aware that this situation that they're in is a defense mechanism. So they're learning to do things that's not ready to honestly fight things, something off. This person is not a hopeless romantic. This person is. And I'm not saying that in a disrespectful way, because I'm a hopeless romantic. Shit, I got Libra and Gemini. Okay, that's the, it's gonna make it's gonna make falling in love a lot easier, and also hurt a lot harder. But the fact of the matter is, this person is all logical because they don't want to get hurt. Well, this person wants the connection, but they're not allowing themselves. To, they're not putting themselves in a situation where there's boundaries that will protect them. Does that make sense? Or things that will protect them. They're looking at what they don't have. And the situation being that what they don't have is right here. You know what I mean? It's weird. It's like this person is not qu quite aware that their situation can be fixable. That the romance or whatever that's going on, the support that they have, it can be, you know, something else can grow from it. They just have to take it back a peg. You know, they'll take it back a couple pegs. This person is so defensive. And it's because they're stressed out, because they're under, you know, they're tense. And because they've, they've gone through things that have made them doubt themselves, the way they think, the way they approach things, the way they, they go forward. That's probably why this person thinks that they're a genius, but they're not. <laughs> you know? They think they're a genius because they know what, you know, what they've been through, what they've gone through. They think they've gone through enough craziness to, you know, to alleviate or avoid situations when in actuality they're starting out fresh. Or this person believes that they know everything, but they're clearly not, they clearly don't. They know that, they, you know, they're aware that they don't know everything, but they act like they do. But they know that their old ways of thinking, this king of swords way of thinking, this fixed, this old 
style of thinking has to be innovated because it's not giving them any sort of solace. This person is definitely weird because this person shows the Three of Cups as a situation, as a, uh, as a problem. Obviously, the release your ex is definitely towards both of these people here because this person is uptight, stre you know, like strapped onto their log logical belt and sword because they're ready to, to protect themselves for whatever the se whatever the hell of the past that they've been through. This person is obviously have not has not let go of the past. Not to say that this person's any less or any yeah you know, is worse or any whatever. There's no scale of who's who's what. It's just this, this is just facts. This person's looking at the past and thinking, "Damn it, I missed this." Or "Holy shit, this is what I'm. This is what I need right now. This is what I. Well, this is what I want. This is what I had. This is what I found very precious to me." This person's always looking as looking at the situation like, "Damn it." It's not here now. And it isn't. The situation is not. Now, it could be too, It could be a good thing and a bad thing, right? It could be that the situation with their ex, toxic, if, and if, it, if at all, it's not here no more. However, this is so hung up that the fact that this situation was so toxic, it's poisoning their... It's, it's, not, it's not poisoning anything. It's preventing movement. It's preventing growth. It's preventing anything from happening. A spiritual, emotional growth. This person's not able to grow from this because they're still thinking, holy shit, this could have happened, or this happened, or this happened, or I, 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 I've been through this already. They're looking at the Three of Cups as if this is never going to end, even though it's done. But the good side, you know, the bad side of it, right, or the whatever, right, the other side of, or another way of reading it, would be this person misses something that the ex had. Or that they had with their ex. They're missing something that they had with their ex, which would be whatever it is, connection, communication, what okay, you know, interactions, getting along, being somewhat of a friend, support. You know, there's something here that this person sees that is missing from this current relationship that they reflect back on the past relationship. And they don't necessarily have the confidence in themselves to integrate what's missing from that past relationship and integrate into this one or that they don't feel like because or maybe perhaps this is a relationship that's kind of been around for a while and they've already tried they know it's not implementable they still have a connection but they're looking at the past as you know there's reasons to continue to accept failure or they're looking at the past as reasons to, you know, or or not or looking at the past as um as like written script as you know history repeats itself as if there's no way anything of anything could get better, but that's why it's important for this person to shift their focus away from what they don't have, away from the things that they feel like they you know they missed or they need. They can have all these things back. It's just that. They can't, they gotta switch that off, you know what I mean? They gotta, this whole focusing on what they don't have or whatever, the things that are missing, things that are missing, it's not gonna help them implement that into this one. What's interesting to me is that this person has the three, excuse me, the two of cups in their pres, in their body placement, but this person has the ace of swords. They're both, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like with the two of cups, the two of cups is someone that mirrors someone. So when I see the two of cups coming up here, coming up in this reading like this, I kind of get the sense that this person is learning something new too. This is a brand new perspective. In their minds, they're not in the present relationship. They're in the past relationship, both of these people. To think of what happened in their past, this, this person is thinking about what happened in their past. Everything that, they, that they've dealt with relationship-wise, even with family. And same with this person. Everything that they've got to deal with, with family and other. Right? So both parties are approaching this situation thinking of their exes. But they're learning something new being together. So, the reason why they're like this is because this person is obviously gotten hurt badly enough to the point where they are not comfortable being comfortable. That's how really, that's how sad this is. Like, this person is not comfortable being comfortable. They can't. They've had some stuff happen to them, which makes them already ready to slice and dice. You know, they can never be wrong. They can never be wrong. This is why this person has this mentality that nothing can go wrong. They can never do wrong, or they can't. Nothing is ever incorrect. Or they are. They have themselves on a higher pedestal because they're the only ones they trust. 
This person has trust issues as well. Okay? But they're learning to trust someone new. It's hard for them, but they are learning to do that. And it, the way they have to do it is by battling the doubts that they have with themselves, the trust that they don't really have with themselves. They only trust themselves, but they don't trust themselves. You get what I'm saying? They barely even trust themselves right now. That's how bad this trust stuff is for this person. And the reason why this person is <sighs> looking at what's not there is because they've never really had it in the first place. I don't think this person's really ever had it. Because the tower talks about things have changed, have adjusted radically, or there are things that have happened out of the blue that they did not see coming. And I kind of have the feeling this person wishes for something that they've always wanted, that wishes for something that they've felt that they've had at one point, that they only get with friends, but they can never transition that over to a relationship. It's really interesting that that's coming up like that, and at least in my mind, that this person is like, I always get this kind of support and love and interaction with friends, but I can never transition that into a relationship that will work for me. So therefore, they're in a relationship that is obviously teaching them something too, that there's going to be, a, there's going to need to be a different way to approach a situation instead of coming at it from a friend perspective, if that makes sense. Like, they're better as friends, but when it comes to relationships, they're not, there's something missing from that. I kind of get the sense of. But the tower is coming up as the reason why this person has the, you know, the two of cups as their present and the five of cups as their mental. Something is missing with the relationship, and they are showing that they're basically doing the same thing, learning the same, learning something new, you know, getting a new perspective, gaining a new idea. And it's because some things have changed out of the blue. I think they're having a hard time adjusting to the, to the new stuff because they missed the way you, things used to be. But there's things that are different with how they are now versus how they used to be because they're in a different environment maybe they're even together maybe there was a distance before what brought you two together was the attraction from a distance and now that these two are together there's no real confidence there's no real you know there's you know there's no you know there's well there's no real confidence i think it's the very least you know the very bottom line but also they don't necessarily both parties don't feel equipped to deal with a relationship because they barely have enough energy or barely have enough equipped to deal with themselves which in actuality is a lie they both have they have everything they need for both situations and then some but they don't see that because they're looking at the past they're looking at what they've been through with exes they've been they're looking at what's hurt them what's caused them grief what's shaking their world up out of the blue and definitely unexpected. I think this person went into this relationship thinking things were going to be the way things were from a distance and they're realizing that that's not the case, but they can make things work. They could do what they need to do to make it happen for themselves. They, they have to be happy with themselves in order for there to be, you know, to be you know, happiness between the relationship. You know what I'm saying? This person has to go back to the Ace of Cups. What makes you happy? Figure out and love yourself before expecting the person to make you happy. This is not going to do that. You know, the person is not here to make you happy. This person is here to help you make you happy because you're going to have to look at what you want that's not there and figure out what makes you happy for yourself and there, voila, confidence, sexy time comes in, boom, all that sexiness is perfect. But this person has to no longer look at the reason as to why they're not happy. They have to look at themselves as the reason, uh, as, the, as the vessel that's going to bring them the happiness so that way the happiness will be able to be shared within the relationship. You know, you don't have abundance by giving what you don't have. You have to give what you do. And both parties don't have anything to give, which is why the magician is like, cool, you found each other, but you guys have got to sustain yourselves before giving each other anything. And I think it's fair because that way nobody has to feel ob obligated to do anything that they don't know how to do themselves for themselves. This is a relationship where both parties are looking at the situation like, okay, what do I need for me right now? So, and eventually that just translates to this is who, this is who I am. This is what I can give because I know I have it for me. Very interesting reading. So let's go ahead and pull your power of romance cards without trying to destroy my the entire reading here. Good lord. Well, 
Well, all right then. Let's take a look here. Surrender the drama. Jesus. Okay, so that's the card dog game. No matter how emotionally charged the situation is, okay, no matter how emotionally charged the situation, remain calm. Do not contribute to the drama. Stay centered. Will um, Staying centered will help resolve the issue more quickly. Hmm. That's interesting. That is interesting as hell. Okay. And... I didn't really get much drama from this other than, of course, ones from the past. But yeah, centering yourself is what's going to help you push forward in this relationship. It's going to help you, you know, work together and help you guys fall in love with not only each other, but with these, with yourselves. All again, you know, both sides. I think both of you guys fall in love with each other, but I think you guys have to fall in love with each other again. By loving yourselves first and loving who you are to see what you've paired yourself with. Does that make sense? But steer clear of the drama, people. No fighting for unnecessary reasons. Know that everything that's going drumming up, it will make sure, rather, that every situation, every argument you have from here on out is not, make sure it is not, a projection of your own problems. Because if it is, then that's where the drama is starting. Because that's not necessarily the other person's fault that you have that insecurity, that you have that that discomfort there. It's it's not yours for, not your fault, but it is yours to own and to your for yours to heal. And that is it. That is all you gotta do. Know that if you have any sort of problems with your partner, make sure that it's not a projection of how you've been, uh, or where you know where you may feel you've been wronged in for in the, in the past or whatever. Right? Understand a, a trigger when it is a trigger, and it's purely just your trigger versus a trigger in the relationship that doesn't show that there's support from the other side. You know, you gotta make sure, and only you can be able to really know whether or not this is a projection of your own problems. Versus an actual problem in a relationship that needs to be fixed, because I don't have, a, I don't think there's anything wrong with this person necessarily bringing up issues in the relationship, but they have to understand, because I think the also person knows where their insecurities begin too, which has nothing to do with the relationship, which may be why they're suffering in silence. 